So Deadpool 3 is finally out, and I found it pretty good. Right off the bat, this is going to be very heavy with the spoilers, and also pretty rambly because I don't really remember the plot beat by beat. I just want to talk about the stuff I liked. When it comes to Deadpool, I wouldn't call myself a fan, really. Not because I don't like the character. I do. I just haven't really read any of the comics, and I've only seen the movies once. I remember liking the first movie, not as much as my dad, who had the movie on his tablet and would watch it at work, and the second one was alright. Throughout the years, at least, back when my family had cable, I would always see the second movie playing on TV more than the first one, so I've seen parts of it more. While I didn't think the second one was bad, I honestly didn't really like Russell. I just never really liked when they were on screen and found a lot of the moments to make me cringe. So I always ranked the first one above it, just for the fact that it didn't have Russell. Going into the third movie, however, I was kind of excited. Not as excited as some people on account of the X-Men movies never being in my childhood, so Hugh Jackman's Wolverine wasn't really something special to me, even though I understand why he's special to everyone else. Knowing he would be coming back to be in a Deadpool movie was cool, though, especially when the last time we've seen these two characters together on the big screen, it was with this. Yeah, I have no memory of this character or this movie, and I only know it because of the internet's hatred towards it, which I'll say is pretty valid because how the fuck do you take the Merc with the mouth and sew it shut? But apparently my dad has a memory of child me telling him that this isn't even what Deadpool's supposed to look like. I do not have that memory, but I'll take his word for it. And I also wasn't that bothered by them bringing back Hugh in a post-Logan world, because as I already said, I never watched the X-Men movies, and when I did end up watching Logan, it was in 2022, while I was sick and spending all day laying on the living room couch watching Hulu. Because of that context, I had really no feelings towards most of that movie. I bet Logan dying in the end was sad for everyone that grew up on the original X-Men movies, but it didn't do anything for me. And while Jonas was finding it really sad to watch Professor X slowly lose his mind. I was laughing at Sir Patrick Stewart driving around in a wheelchair rambling about Taco Bell. We are not the same. The new Chisalupa from Taco Bell. I'll also mention this. I have watched Free Guy. I bring that up because this movie is not only the third in the Deadpool trilogy, but also in the Ryan Reynolds, Sean Levy trilogy consisting of The Adam Project, Free Guy, and now this film. I did not like Free Guy. I haven't seen The Adam Project, but Free Guy was a cringe fest with horrible dialogue, messy writing, a terrible depiction of the internet and the gaming side of it, which hurt me to a different degree given how I literally grew up on that side of the internet, and watched Jacksepticeye and Dan TDM as a kid. So seeing them in this made me want to curl up into non-existence. So if there was anything that made me iffy on this movie, it was Sean Levy being the director. To be fair, these movies have different writers, which made it a little less iffy, but writers aren't as important for a movie or how it turns out as they really should be, to be honest. Anyways, I say all of this just to set you up with the context of how I went into this movie. I also avoided everything I could about this film outside of watching the Super Bowl trailer when it first dropped, as I've tried to do with movies nowadays, and as usual, I'm glad that I went that route. I did have two of the cameos get spoiled for me, but that's whatever. Now to talk about the actual movie. As I said in the beginning, I liked it. I had a lot of fun watching it and a whole hell of a lot of laughs. From the very get-go, this movie already breaks the fourth wall with Deadpool bringing up the legacy of Logan and joking that they're going to defame it as he digs up the grave, just to then show that the Logan from that movie is in fact still dead. The Wolverine we get to spend time with in this film is not the one that died, but instead one from a different universe that turns out to be the worst Wolverine because he denied being a hero, and because of that, got all the X-Men and mutants killed on his world. Which I thought was a nice way of doing things and still keeping that legacy intact. You can go back and watch Logan and know that Logan still dies in this and remains dead. The only thing that happens after this is Deadpool tearing his skeleton apart and using it to murder a bunch of TVA members. Is that disrespecting the dead? Yeah, probably. But at least Logan's still dead. I may not care that much, but I'll take this over reviving him. Speaking of the TVA, this is yet another MCU movie that uses information and characters from the TV shows that I never watched. And like with Doctor Strange 2, I found it to work pretty well. Despite having never watched Loki, I could get a decent enough understanding of the TVA and this guy's mission to at least be able to follow and not be left confused. I also like how despite the concept of timelines and the TVA being a thing introduced back in 2019's Endgame and fleshed out a bit in the fourth phase of the MCU, the movie manages to connect it to that time-traveling montage at the end of Deadpool 2 in a way that felt pretty natural to me at least. The whole transitioning of Deadpool into the MCU in general worked pretty well in my opinion, with the movie feeling like a pretty good threequel while simultaneously being in its own thing inside of the MCU. I guess it's pretty easy to do that when your main character is the epitome of fourth wall breaks and is aware that he's in a movie. 
Speaking of the fourth wall breaks and being meta, that has been a heavy trend in movies since the first Deadpool film, and it's gotten tiring to a lot of folks, myself included. I enjoy a good fourth wall break here and there, but when a simple movie that has nothing to do with Deadpool has characters acting like Deadpool is when I start to have a problem with it. But since this is a Deadpool movie, it didn't bother me. And it of course led to a lot of funny moments, like the aforementioned beginning of the movie, or when Deadpool brings Wolverine to the TVA and says, Welcome to the MCU, you're here at a low point. Honestly, as someone who is never a big fan of the MCU, and especially nowadays have zero interest in it, every time the MCU or the current state of it got made fun of, it was the funniest shit in the movie to me. I could be cynical and just look at it as a corporation making fun of themselves, but the way I kept viewing it and would like to keep viewing it is Ryan Reynolds getting brought on into the MCU and deciding to just make fun of it as much as he possibly could. <laughs> Easily the biggest laugh I had throughout the entire movie was when Wesley Snipes said, There's only been one blade and there always will be one blade. <laughs> that felt like a heavy diss towards Marvel's struggle at writing a blade movie for the last five years and keeping Mahershala's career at a standstill because of it. Oh yeah, speaking of Wesley Snipes, I mentioned that I got two of the cameos spoiled to me. Those were Sabretooth and Jennifer Garner's Elektra. To be fair, they were both rumors that I had heard on John Campia back in the day, but then after the movie was released, I got a short recommended to me about the movie's cameos and the thumbnail showed Jennifer Garner, and then I'm pretty sure I ended up seeing a screenshot of Sabretooth in this movie. I had no idea about Wesley fucking Snipes being in this, though. <laughs> Which, okay, that brings me into the nostalgia cameos. Is it nostalgia be? Eh, you could say it is, and I wouldn't really disagree with you. But at the same time, I wouldn't really say it is. Mostly because of Godzilla Mendoza's video about how this movie is a farewell to Fox's Marvel Universe, which I highly recommend going and watching that. But also because, I mean, it's it, it's it's Jennifer Garner's Elektra and, and Channing Tatum as a character that never even made it onto the big screen. I mean... I, I feel like Johnny Storm and Blade are the only things I could really call nostalgia for the mass majority of people. But, I don't know, it, it didn't really feel nostalgia baity in the same way as, say, the Star Wars sequels. But, anyways. But even if you do want to make the claim that it is nostalgia bait, personally for me, I have no nostalgia for any of these characters. And I don't even know who the fuck Channing Tatum was even playing. Yet, I still enjoyed seeing these characters mostly because of the context as to why they're here. We meet them while being in The Void, the place where forgotten IPs and characters go when their universe dies, which is what happened to this Blade, Elektra, Johnny Storm, and even X-23. And as I had just said, Channing Tatum's character wasn't even something that got to exist. But I guess they spent years trying to get that movie made, so this movie got to at least bring that to the fans. The guy in front of me in the theater actually told me about that. <laughs> and the Johnny Storm cameo was funny as fuck because I forgot Chris Evans even played the character before Captain America. <laughs> like, I knew that! But then when he got on screen, I was just genuinely thinking it was going to be like a multiverse Captain America. And then he turned into fucking fire. And I was like, oh yeah, you're the fire guy from Fantastic Four. <laughs> and also, uh, hearing Chris Evans swear this much was weird as hell. Anyways, what I was the most concerned with when going into this movie was the dialogue and humor. You know, given free guy... And in general, it being an MCU movie, but I'm glad to say that it feels more in line with the first two Deadpool films. There were a lot of hilarious lines as usual. I got back from the theater and was almost immediately quoting some of them off with my dad. And yes, there is a mention of the woke mob and another about cancel culture, and quite honestly, they didn't bother me like they usually do. They were such quick one-liners that I could easily shrug off soon after. I can't really remember what the woke mob line was, but the I'm already in the void, I ain't trying to get cancelled line after Blade Mistakes retired for retarded is so tame and doesn't really give off boomer yelling at the clouds vibe as it usually does. There's a line about how Gen Z's always got a trauma dump, why don't you just bottle it in and turn it into cancer like the rest of us, which got a genuine laugh out of me. Like, yeah, fair, we do be trauma dumping a lot. <laughs> Deadpool at one point says, I don't want smoke, I ain't got beef. And that made me think of Free Guy, but for some reason it just kind of worked here. I don't know why when it's in the context of Deadpool, it just works for me. Even outside of Deadpool quotes, there's a line where Happy Hogan says, and I'm happy, in the context of the feeling, but because it's also his name, I found it really funny. And I haven't even mentioned the action scenes. Holy fuck, they're amazing. 
They're easily the best parts of the movie. Loved the action scene at the beginning of the film, working as the opening credits as well, and I think my favorite one, and maybe my favorite scene in the entire movie, was Deadpool and Wolverine fighting the Deadpool Corps side by side. That wide shot panning horizontally across the bus as they're wiping Deadpool after Deadpool was just a lot of fun to watch. I also like that scene between Wolverine and X-23 at the campfire. It's basic, but it was still nice to watch. Speaking of X-23, damn it was weird hearing her talk in this movie. <laughs> and as usual, Ryan Reynolds' as Deadpool is great, and despite me only ever seeing Hugh Jackman's Wolverine as an old, depressed man, he was great in the role as well. They're both iconic in the roles for a reason. I forgot that Cassandra Nova was going to be a character in this movie, and Emma Corrin was great. I have no say in how they portrayed the character because I don't know it, but Emma gave a great performance and had moments where she was genuinely pretty creepy. When Lady Poole appeared, the first thing I wanted to know was who was playing her and I was immediately looking for the name when the credits were rolling. Seeing Blake Lively be credited was really funny and very fitting. I, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that. It, I mean, it's, it's fucking Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. Of course he's gonna put his wife in as Lady Poole. Oh yeah, there's also that Henry Cavill Wolverine fan casting moment. I don't really care about it, didn't even know that was a fan casting, but I fucking loved Deadpool saying, we'll treat you better than the ones on the other side. Not only do we get Ryan Reynolds joking about the modern state of Marvel, but also throwing a jab at how Warner Brothers fucked over Henry Cavill and heavily misused him. Amazing. 10 out of 10. Love it. <laughs> I think my one and only complaint with the film was honestly the music. And no, I'm not talking about NSYNC playing in the beginning. I noticed it more towards the third act, where the soundtrack relied really heavily on these large, bombastic orchestral strings on top of trap beats, which felt the most how you doing fellow kids free guy vibes, along with how I first noticed it playing when Blade is revealed. I know it's not an entire rap song or a generic rap beat like the stereotype usually is, but it being cinematic orchestral trap still feels kind of weird. There's also the antimatter scene at the end, which had this big, loud orchestra cover of his song with this huge gospel singing, and the mix sounded fucking horrible. I could barely make out the occasional word during that entire scene. But other than that, I really enjoyed the movie. It was a lot of fun with a lot of laughs, and yeah, like I said, it's that two in my current ranking of the trilogy. That's about all I gotta say. I know I didn't really go much into the plot of the movie, mostly because I don't remember that much of it. Deadpool's universe is dying because of Logan's death and he tries to fix it, but then he just accepts it in the end. That's about all I can remember. But to be fair, my enjoyment of the movie didn't come from its story. It came from the almost slice of life feel of Wade and Logan being together, along with the dope ass action sequences. So yeah, what did you think of Deadpool and Wolverine? Let me know in the comments, and uh, hope you have a good day. And of course, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. subscribe and please